I'm wondering today if you have a goal that you're working towards. Uh, maybe there's something that you've been thinking about for a long time and you decided that 2018 is your year to do it. Well, that's been the case for me. Um, generally speaking, I have an intention each year, something that I'm working towards. And uh, this year, in addition to having an intention, I actually have two big goals. One is to write the book and Thoughtfully Fit. And two is to really become a great keynote speaker. And I'm not great, I'm good. <laughs> I, I'm a, I, I will say I've worked for 20 years to become a great trainer and a great facilitator and a great teacher and I love doing that and I have great passion and joy and confidence. When it gets to being on a main stage and that's, you know, the, so that is teaching four hours, eight hours, a full week, going deep, um, highly interactive, challenging people, asking questions. When you get to a keynote, we're on a stage and it's, you know, 45 minutes, an hour, um, I, I have a long ways to go. And, and that's fine, that's just where I am. And one of the things when I'm working with coaching clients that I always say is you start where you are. And sometimes that's hard. And uh, last week in my Facebook Live video, I talked about uh, being thoughtfully fit through the lens of taking a professional pause and that I went to the National Speakers Association Conference. And I left there feeling this total paradox of emotions, like this mix of excited and inspired and, oh, it was just seeing the professional speakers on the main stage for those four days and um, seeing what's possible, how you can motivate an audience and inspire an audience and weave in great content with entertainment. That was really exciting. But I also left feeling completely overwhelmed, feeling like I'm so far behind and like the path to achieve my goal is so long and so far away that I don't even know where to start. And that's what I wanna share with you today is um, what do you do if you feel like you have a goal and the path feels so big and so overwhelming. So the first thing I wanna share is just saying that's okay, that's normal. Give yourself permission to feel whatever you're feeling. And so when I came back from the NSA, one of the things I had to do was just to, to pause and to let it all sink in. And I've learned that after attending these conferences for the last five years, what I used to do is jump right in, I'd have my to-do list that had, I'm not kidding, 83 things on it, and I burnt out, and I wasn't, very focused in my actions. And so as I have worked really hard to be thoughtfully fit, I, I mean, I'm telling you, I apply this stuff to my life all the time. I came back and first thing I did is, is paused to think about what is it that were the greatest takeaways? Of the 83 things that I could do, what are the top three or the top five? And so I took some time to think about where my business is going, what I want to create for my life, because admittedly there were a lot of keynote speakers who this is what they do full time and they live on the road 200 days a year, they travel internationally, they have created a business that works for them that I would hate. I wanna be home with my girls. I don't wanna be traveling and living in hotels. So the first thing I had to do was to recognize that what works for other people isn't what works for me at this moment. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, yes, great, bring it. But right now, that is a core value that I want to be present in my life for my daughters. And I wanna build a business that has balance. So in that pause, I had to think about what is it, is, what's the business and the model that I'm creating? And what are the top takeaways and action items that will get me closer to that? And so I met with Jill on my team, who you met two weeks, or last week. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting uh, dyslexia here. <laughs> um, I think maybe it was last week that you met Jill, my new coaching coordinator. Um, and 
Jill and I sat down and had a meeting where we debriefed the NSA conference together and shared our ideas, our takeaways to think about what would we want to implement. And then after you've taken time to pause and to think about your goal and to think about what is just the next step, if you were going to move forward towards your goal, what is the next step? And then with that awareness, you act. And I can't tell you how many times I have had life coaching clients or executive coaching clients say to me, Darcy, I can't believe how far I've gotten on this journey after only four months. I've been trying to do this for four years and I have felt stuck. And one of the secrets, one of the keys is that you break it down and you just look at what's next. So you, you pause, you create the space to have the conversation to create new awareness by asking powerful questions and in Thoughtfully Fit, you can coach yourself to achieve your big goals. You can create that space and that pause for yourself and then think. And then with that new awareness, there's always in coaching, it ends with action. What are you going to do with the new awareness that you have? How are you going to move forward? And not in the next year, not in 2018. It's what are you going to do between now and our next coaching conversation, which is generally every two weeks we talk. So that's what I challenge you. And maybe we'll even look at it, just make it a little smaller. This week, what is it that you want to do to get you closer to achieving that goal? Take the time to pause and to think about the next step. And it requires patience and grit and endurance and stillness and thoughtfulness. Because in order to achieve those big goals, you have to be willing to pause and think and then act. Just like to be thoughtfully fit in your life, to be more intentional in your decisions and in your relationships. And when you can do that, and you can do it consistently, you too will find that in four months, you have made progress beyond your wildest dreams. The other tip that I have for you, if you really want to jump in and accomplish your goal and you want to coach yourself and you want to use the brilliance and magic of what works in coaching, one of the other things in addition to creating new awareness and then creating an action step of the next step, not the next 83 steps, is to create some accountability and support. And so in addition to identifying what your next step is, who can support you? And what kind of accountability do you want to build in? On my journey to becoming what I hope to be is a really inspiring keynoter, not for itself, its own sake, but because I, I want to give others the ability to think deeply, to be motivated, to take a look within, to create some new self-awareness, and then to go play big to go make those bold decisions that are gonna bring you closer to what you want in your life. In order to do that, I've done, I've, I've, I've set my life up with a lot of accountability to help me achieve the goal that I say I wanna achieve. One of the things is I have hired a speech coach. I attended keynote camp with two of the best keynoters in the country and there were 20 participants there, so 19 other people. We have created a mastermind group, a subset of those 19, where every month we get on Skype or Zoom and we practice our material and we get feedback from each other. Give feedback and get feedback. And so every month I'm practicing part of my keynote and I'm getting really crucial, harsh, beautiful, challenging feedback to improve my skills. And the cool thing is I'm also providing that feedback for the others. So that's sharpening my, I think, uh, sharpening my skills by noticing and hearing other people give feedback to people who have the same goal. So think about it. Is, is there someone else who has the same goal as you that you could design a, an accountability group, a mastermind session, support with? They have been incredible. In addition, I belong to the National Speakers Association, the Wisconsin chapter, and they have uh, these 
I don't, I can't remember what they're called. If there's speaker meetups, mastermind groups that are about every two months for half a day where it's the same thing as my online virtual mastermind, but it's in person. And so you, you get up, you stand there and you give a part of the keynote and you open yourself up to feedback, which can be really hard at times. I mean, it can be really hard and it's exactly what I need to get better. And so I say, bring it because this is what I need to achieve my goal. I record my speeches and watch them again and send them to my speech coach. And I have my team give feedback and in the back of the room, Jill and others are looking at the audience reaction. And when does the energy go down? And maybe that story isn't quite right. And maybe that PowerPoint slide doesn't work. And so these are all of the things that I've done to create accountability and support in achieving my goal. And so that's what I challenge you to think about in addition to what is the next step? And, and maybe this is the next step, identifying what kind of accountability system and support you could design for yourself, exploring that in the next week. Not unlike I've designed accountability and support, I have a goal, a lifetime goal. It's not an annual goal to be physically fit, to be healthy, because I wanna be a part of my girls' lives in a very active, engaging way and not be limited by, by energy or health. So one of the things that I have created as accountability and support on that goal is I have a triathlon team and we have multiple practices. Right now in the winter, it's biking inside and running practices. Um, I'm on a master swim team. I just joined back up and it feels so good to be back on a master swim team that I do that twice a week. Um, I've got a yoga studio that I belong to and I've got a friend who we regularly are saying, okay, which days are we going to go this week to yoga to create some accountability? I've got a training peaks, which is an online program where my coach sends me my workouts and every day I have to log what I did and send it to her. So there's accountability to my coach. There's support because the other athletes are going and I know if I don't show up, I'm letting them down. So they're looking for me. Where, why weren't you at our bike practice? There's all sorts of ways that you can create support and accountability for yourself. There's a lot of ways that are, that are free. And if you don't know where to start or there isn't a group that naturally exists, hire a coach. We have six phenomenal coaches. That's one of the things that I also do for accountability and support is I hire my own coach. Reach out, talk to Jill, set up a free exploratory session to say here, and, and maybe some of you are watching this video thinking, you know, Doris, that's a, that's a leap. I don't even know what my goal would be. You talk about having a big goal. Okay, maybe that's what you need first. But if you need some support and accountability, that's another way to get it, to design it is to hire a coach. So not only do I have my triathlon coach and swim coach, I've got a life coach who helps me stay really focused. And when I feel unmotivated, when I get off track, when I feel frustrated, I bring that to my coach and I pause. And she helps me create new awareness by asking me thoughtful questions. And I get unstuck and I get inspired again, and then I act. So identify for yourself this week, what's the next step for you? Is the next step to create a goal? Is it to create a support system to accountability, uh, an accountability measure? Is it to explore and reach out to hiring a coach? Set yourself up for success, it's worth it. And let me know if you do, how it goes. I would love to hear and I'd love to find out. And if you haven't signed up for my Thoughtfully Fit tips each week, typically on Wednesday, middle of the week, uh, we'll send out a short email on how to be thoughtfully fit in your life. It has all to do, everything to do with creating high performing people and teams, emotional intelligence, conflict. This week, yesterday's blog Thoughtfully Fit tips post was about the big, the good, the good, the bad, and the ugly of goal setting. So if you haven't signed up, I encourage you to do that as well. You can just go to my website, darcyloma.com, sign up, you'll get the weekly email. 
Uh, you can unsubscribe at any time or you can forward it to other people and um, use that as an accountability measure as well. Thank you so much for joining me, whether you're here live or whether you're watching the recording after. I look forward to seeing you next week for Thoughtfully Fit Thursdays. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care.